all very exciting things. I'm going to let Susan just jump right in and take this. She can tell us a little bit more about herself and then take on that presentation. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen right now so you guys can see the, the beautiful slides that, you know, I work so hard for. So um, my name is Susan Combs and um, I am in New York City. So depending upon where you're at in the world right now, um, I might be in your backyard or I might be across the country. So um, but I started my brokerage firm at 26 years old, um, and that was 15 years ago. So if you do the math, I'm 41 now. And, uh, you know, basically I didn't know what I didn't know, and, um, but I knew how to treat people. And so that's what it kind of came down to, and my background's in hospitality. And so a lot of the people that I brought on board have been, their backgrounds have also been in, in hospitality as well. So um, we only have a half hour today. I talk fast. I'm sorry, I talk New York, even though I'm from Missouri. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to, you know, throw them in the chat, and I'm sure I'll I'll be able to get to them. So this is kind of what we're going to do today. So we're going to talk about, I call this talk like something for everybody. So no matter where you are in your walk of life, if you're like new to the industry, if you've been in for 35 years or more, you're going to get something. So and we're going to talk about adapting your, uh, your, your workforce, your um, work environment. We're going to talk about getting paid for your time, talk about some taking advantage of social media and technology things, um, talk about team strategy. And then I'm going to give you kind of a fun, like what I've learned along the way. So sound good? Can't see you guys, but I'm sure you're giving me a thumbs up and we're good. <laughs> so one of the things I've learned, I used to be the national president uh, for women insurance and financial services. And um, so that organization has been around uh, about 85 years. And so one of the things that I've learned along the way is, you know, everybody wants to get the millennials and things like that. And so this is kind of like some tricks on how to get millennials also kind of get to those, those, Generation Z, um, but kind of a, you know, unintended uh, benefit, I would say, is if you work to make your um, work environment millennial friendly, it will then in turn be women friendly. So something to keep in mind. So flexibility, that's something that, that millennials want. I mean, I feel like if you haven't learned how to be flexible in COVID, like where you been, you know, but that's been something that if you didn't have that flexibility aspect, I think you're kind of learning about it right now. Um, and again, what I said is if it is mom friendly, that also equals uh, millennial friendly. So with the flexibility, what I'm talking about is, um, you know, I set up my company from day one is, you know, I had an office, but it was like, it was important to me to, as long as you had your computer, you had your phone, you should be able to work anywhere in the world. And, you know, as I was mentioning before we came on, one of my staff members is in Ghana right now <laughs> and she's there for a month and she's able to be there for a month because we set it up for her to be able to have her computer, have her phone, everything works when she's in Ghana versus in New York. So it's something to be, um, you know, um, kind of cognizant of. And again, like, especially in COVID, if you are not mobile, I'm sure you are now, um, because that's something that you were definitely going to be missing the boat. Millennials also want to be inspired. Um, you know, they want to look for companies that are socially responsible, you know, that are giving back in society. I mean, we've seen that a lot with, um, you know, different causes that are out there or, um, you know, Black Lives Matter. There's been a lot of companies that have, have got behind, um, you know, that mission and have brought their employees into that because that's been something that's been important for the employees. Um, the other thing that a lot of millennials are looking for is they're looking for skills, not cash. Um, and what I mean by that is you have millennials that may be willing to take lower in salary because you're going to help build their resume and build their skills. So maybe it's um, you're helping them get a designation. Maybe you're bringing somebody on and they're not licensed and you help them with their, you know, their insurance licensing class or securities classes or what have you. They also want to be part of the team. Um, and that, that goes back to women too. We love to collaborate. We love to be part of a team. And so that's something that's just hugely important for both of these demographics. So um, they also, the concept of working with, not for. So if you lined up all my staff members and you just asked them, you know, you had a conversation, they would tell you they work with Susan, they would never say they work for Susan. And that's something that I intentionally made my culture that way. And when I overheard people say that I knew I had, I had you know, won the day and that made me so happy, because it was something that I want them to have feel like they have ownership in the company and feel like that their voices matter no matter, you know, if we're talking about like, what coffee we're going to pick to, <laughs> to buy for the office, or if we're talking about like different strategies that we're going to um, be taking a look at. 
And this is like my tip. This is my manipulation tip for you right here. Um, if you label a project as unique or special, you can get, get a millennial to do it. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, um, I, I mean, I've done it so many times um, where I've just been like, you know what? I'm not going to say a real name. We'll say John. Hey, John. Um, you know what? We really need help on this project. Um, and we know that your skill set is just really on point for this unique project that's really going to help take our business to the next level. And we know that you're going to be able to, um, to do, you know, all the background and all the research and put together this special program for our clients. Eat out of your hand. So, um, you know, just think about those things that there's, you have to be cautious with the words that you pick because millennials and Xers are very sensitive to words. So if you're looking for them to motivate them and get them to buy in, um, and, you know, again, with the social responsibility and also a special unique project example would be, you know, say you want to become social responsible and say you want to have, you know, affiliate with the charity. Like my company, we are aligned with the charity every single year. And so we'll support that charity not only with social media strategy, but with money and also with, um, with hours of uh, volunteer work. And so those are things that we look to change every single year. So if you're looking to kind of have a project that's kind of different and you're wanting to kind of piggyback off that social responsible or, you know, charitable component, I would tell you to take a look at that. Next one, getting paid for your time. Um, you know what? My mother told me a long time ago, like if you, um, if you don't value your time, nobody else will. So the thing is, when you look at getting paid for your time, you have to figure out what you're worth. So the thing is to kind of back into figuring out what you're worth is um, looking at your, your what if you're a producer or say you're a, a business owner, you look at what the, the sales are for the company. You look at how many hours that you're working and you back that in. So like I know that I'm wor worth like $247.67. I just know that. So it's just like, so what that means to me is time is money. So basically like I'm giving up like, you know, $125 basically to talk to you guys today and that's okay. But it's just like, but I know what that is worth. And I think that's something that you have to be cognizant of because anytime somebody is just like, you know what, I, I want you to, to spend some time on this. I want, you have to know what that's going to be, you know, as a cost to you. You have to also be willing to walk away. Um, so sometimes people are just like, you know, they want to pick your brain, they want to pick your brain, or they, they want you to spend time on something, but they never have any intention of buying. You have to will be willing to say, no, you know what, this is just not going to be for me. And that's okay. So think, these are things that I get paid for outside of selling insurance to kind of give you a little bit more information on kind of what I'm talking about. So insurance advising on products with no commissions. So in the state of New York, we do not get paid for individual products. Uh, and when I say individual products, individual health insurance for the most part. So um, we started charging consulting fees because we're still doing all the work. We're still doing doctor searches, drug searches, advising them on what uh, carrier to take, advising them on what plan design to take, explaining things. And, why should we do that for free? So that's something that we started charging is on an hourly basis for that. Groups that, that want to date, but they're not ready to get married. So that's one of the things that I always say is like, do you want to date me or do you want to marry me? And what I basic, basically mean by that is, you know, if I always tell people up front, like when it comes to insurance, I get paid one of two ways. I get paid with consulting fees or I get paid by the carrier. And if I get paid by the carrier, you know, you're having me come in and you want me to develop a strategy for me. You sign a BOR letter, broker of record letter, and then I'm now your broker and I'm getting compensated by the carrier. Okay. You're married to me. But if you're like, you know what, Susan, I'm not really ready to walk down the aisle with you yet, but I want to see what, what you got. So then you can date me. And then I can come up with a strategy, but you're going to pay me an hourly fee. And then if at the end of the day, you know, your brother-in-law is your broker and you want to take my strategy over to him and have him implemented, then you know what? I've been paid for my time. So I find that that weeds out people that are really serious about, you know, using you for your expertise. Um, I know like with with annuities and things like that I'm, you know, I'm not certain if, if, if the states are going to be, you know, you might have to check with your state and your insurance regulations to see if you're able to do that stuff. But so I'll give that caveat. Um, I know I can do it in New York. Um, advisory boards and boards of directors. So anytime you have somebody that says to you like, Hey Joe, I want to pick your brain. 
anytime somebody says that they want to pick your brain about something, that should be a light bulb over your head, that that would be a great place to pitch yourself as an advisory board member. So a lot of times, you know, you get these startup companies, I mean, insurance, fintech, whatever, they'll call you and say like, hey, I want to brainstorm on this, get your, get your thoughts on this, see what you think. And so, you know, I'll let them come into the office, we'll sit down for an hour, and I'll say, um, you know, they'll kind of tell me what they're doing, and I give them kind of my, you know, my opinion on things. And then I'll say, have you thought about putting together an advisory board or are you in the process of creating an advisory board? And if they're like, no, what is that? And I, then I usually I'll say, well, you know, it's usually people outside your direct, you know, chain of command where, you know, you might have different areas of expertise. So maybe you have an attorney, maybe you have a CPA, maybe you have, you know, um, like an insurance person like myself, you know, or maybe you have somebody that's sales and marketing and you put together these people that are going to be your board of directors and they're going to advise you. So anytime you're going to launch a new product, or anytime you're going to expand things, it's great to just have those people and utilize their services because the years of expertise that come into a room like that, you can't put a price tag on. So, you know, the thing that I'll say to you about that is there's kind of one of two ways to get paid on that stuff. Sometimes you can get paid like a retainer, an hourly fee, or sometimes they'll give you shares of the company. Shares of the company seems to be an easier thing to get, but I will warn you, if this company is not going to be sold, what are you really getting? So those are things to just kind of keep in mind when you're taking a look at that. Um, also speaking, um, I do charge, you know, not, not you guys, but, um, but I do charge speakers fees um, when I'm speaking and doing keynote things at conferences. Um, and so you always have to take a look at like, what is, what's the cost to you and what do you, what's the benefit, right? So if it's a conference and maybe, um, maybe it's a conference I want to go to and I know I'm going to get a lot of education out of. I might waive my speaker fee and just pick up expenses. If I know they're going to give me a free conference registration, they're going to pay, you know, all my, um, my expenses to get there. And then I'm going to actually learn during that time. So those are things that you kind of have to, to weigh out, but it, it, it all comes back to like knowing what you're worth kind of that first point. And then the last thing is expert witnessing. So um, I, I do expert witnessing all across the country. I think I work in like 38 states now, um, but it's me and one other guy do what I do. And um, so I do expert witnessing on medical malpractice claims and high entropy and fall. And that's something that don't be scared of. It's, it's actually really cool. It's a lot of fun. You have to know your craft inside and out and you have to be a strategist. So if you know your craft, but you're not a strategist, it might not be something for you, but um, don't be afraid to pitch yourself on that aspect. But I will tell you, there's a distinct way to put that stuff together. You're going to have to have um, a great bookkeeping system. You're going to have to have a way to track time. You're going to have to have, you know, a rate sheet and a CV and, and all these things, a retainer contract. Um, if that's something that anybody's interested in kind of exploring, you know, after the call, feel free to, you'll have my contact information. You can shoot me an email and I'd be more than happy to hop on a call and tell you kind of how I did that. Okay. So we're going to shift over. I know I'm going fast here. I'm like, it's 12, 2, 13. Um, so this is like the fun stuff. So this is a social media strategy. So one of the things that um, I think is important is, um, and the reason I have that like lion picture right there is I, I spoke at a conference or I spoke at a, for a university one time and there was a woman that was a CFO of a large um, computer company that spoke before me. And she said, don't roar after the kill. And I'm sitting there with a bunch of college kids and I look at the table and I said, freaking roar after the kill. If you don't roar, nobody's going to roar for you. So I think that's something that you kind of got to keep in mind. And I know with annuities and like if there's securities license, there's certain ways you have to do things. And I know you have to go through compliance. So this just depends. I mean, this is what I do because I don't have compliance because I'm not securities licensed. So just kind of keep those things in mind. So first thing, um, and these are like, man, this is like, this is this is my, my book. This is my, my book of things that I use on a daily basis. I don't know if any of you guys remember Noozle. It's now owned by LinkedIn. Um, do you guys know, and I know I can't see you raise your hands, but you know how you guys get those emails from LinkedIn and say like, hey, David Novak's in the news today, or look at what David Novak's doing or whatever. Um, and so those are, that was a, like an algorithm that news will set up. So it's when your contacts are in the news. So those are great ways. So anytime you get that LinkedIn email with the news, those are great sharing points because a lot of times people, you get people that are, um, they're shy about promoting themselves, but those are great ways to promote them, share that information, congratulate them on being in the news. And then it also helps build some social capital for you with that person because then the next time they need annuities or insurance or what have you, they're going to give you a call. Haro. 
This stands for help a reporter out. This is a free service. You, you can sign up for emails. You get emails. I think you can set it up however you want it, if it one, once a day, three times a day. But these are all reporters looking for sources. So I would encourage you to not um, look at the, you know, the box of saying like, okay, there, it's somebody asking for an annuity specialist. It's somebody asking for an insurance. I would let have you look at it broader. So if you see that there's a reporter looking for, uh, say, they're working with small businesses and they're trying to help them, you know, cut costs. Pitch yourself in there, and I will tell you, like, don't respond like an insurance person respond like a reporter. So the shorter, be, be, be brief, be bold, and be gone. You want to make an impression, but you, you, you need them to read your soundbite and you want them to use you. If you've also used videos in, um, you know, on your website or online, and you are, you've answered that question in a video, that's a great thing to put when you're responding to reporters saying, Hey, Joe, um, you know, I know you're looking for ways to, you know, cut some insurance costs. We help people do this on a daily basis. Here's actually a few videos that talk about it. Um, more than happy to, to, you know, hop on a call to, to help you out more. Let me know. Done. Okay. Don't give them your whole strategy in blue book. Felt. So felt is cool. I think I have punk post on here too. I don't. Okay. So felt is also cool and punk, punk post is cool. So those are actually two, um, uh, like greeting cards things, but they're from your phone. So felt is like an app where you can literally, you can take a picture of something you use one of their cards and you use your finger as a stylus and write the card. So it's in your handwriting and you can send it out from your phone. So right after you've had a meeting, you can be like, you know, Hey Joe, it was so great to see you. Um, you know, and I'm a Chiefs fan, so like we won last night. So you know, you could send me a card that says, "Susan, so great to hear you. Hey, great game with the Chiefs." Something like that. I mean, huge impression. The other one I really like is Punk Post. That's P-U-N-K P-O-S-T. So that is a greeting card company that supports local artists. And that is amazing. So you get on that app, you get to pick out the card, you tell them if you want it fun, if you want it sweet, if you want it formal, and then you write it. And then an artist like draws everything, draws everything, writes it, mails it. I mean, and I don't know about you, but like a greeting card these days are like what, like six, seven bucks. And it, that's how much it costs you to do that. But I will tell you, it makes such an impression. It's really, really cool. So Zoom, we all know about Zoom. We're on Zoom right now, right? You know, so it's just, that's been something that we were, we were Zooming before Zoom was a thing. So, um, you know, we, uh, we have a lot of clients all over the world. So we always like allowed, um, we met them where they were. So if they wanted to like, meet online doing a Skype meeting or a Zoom meeting, we would do that. If they want to do a phone call, we would do that. If they want to do in person, we would do that. So I think that's important to be kind of a chameleon that way. And then the so social media strategy. I had a friend that taught me a long time ago to do a third, a third, a third. So this is a third where you're informing everybody. So you're educating people. So um, if there's like a new law change with annuities or something like that, that's a great thing to you know inform people on. A third where you're a human so you're showing something about yourself. So again, like I just said about the Chiefs, like if you looked at my social media stuff, you'd see like all my stuff posted about the Chiefs this morning from the, the win last night. Um, and it shows like the personal touch. You know, if you're, and I'm an avid CrossFitter, so sometimes I'll post my workouts too. So just showing that you're a person and not a robot behind the computer is, I think is very, very important. And then the third way you're recognizing somebody else. I guarantee you anywhere in the world, today somebody got an award. So um, that goes back to like, you can use that LinkedIn component, that newsle thing. That's a great way to recognize people. And, you know, we've used, um, and I'll show you kind of some examples of the social media things we do where we've recognized other people. Um, look at doing themes. Like we do um, Motivation or Mentor Monday. We do Wonder Woman Wednesday. And we do either Feature Friday or Fun Fact Friday. And then during the month of November, we do Thankful Thursday. So we use Hootsuite. I think you guys are able to use Hootsuite. That's an aggregator of um, social media platforms. So you can post on one thing and then it can go to all other things. And we use PicMonkey to do these beautiful infographics. So I'm going to show you those in a second. And then the important thing is have fun. If you're not having fun and you're not showing your personality through your social media, if you're doing the canned responses or like, you know, no offense, but like some of the securities people, like I know you guys only have approved ones, but it, you know, you'll see the same message from 25 advisors that you're connected to. And 
it just loses its luster, I think. So here's some examples of like some social media strategies and we've done all this with PicMonkey. So that's Mentor Monday, all it is, is just a cool quote, a cool motivational quote. Then the Wonder Woman Wednesday, um, all we do is uh, we ask, I, I write an, uh, a series for Benefits Pro. And so it highlights women in our industry. So I ask them wh what's been their biggest accomplishment in the past 12 months. So we turn that into Wonder Woman Wednesday outside of the article as well. And then Feature Friday, same thing. We ask our clients and say, what's been the biggest accomplishment in the past 12 months? So it gives them a chance to shine. And then if we don't have somebody for a Feature Friday, then we'll do Fun Fact Friday. And that's been fun. Like, you know, just you can find so many of those cool things um, all over the internet on that stuff. Okay. And I know we got 10 minutes left. <laughs> so, um, so the team strategy. So I have like three teams. So I have my work team. I have, I'm going to show all these right now, a personal growth team. And then I have my home team. So with my work team, it's very much important to do calendar management. I mean, I handed off my calendar like years ago. And I'll tell you, as soon as you hand off your calendar, it is so much more freeing. I mean, it's just like you become so much more efficient because you, you know, as well as I know, when there's like five emails back and forth to schedule one freaking meeting, I mean, that gets old really quick. So if you can have somebody else deal with that, that's worth less per hour than you are, do it. Um, we handle emails um, backwards. So, you know, like after, you know, I can see my inbox right now and in the past 15, 20 minutes I've been talking, I've had 31 emails come in. Well, you know what? I'm going to go to the one that I got most recent and work my way down. I know that the person that emailed me most recent is getting a response quicker, but I do have a team. So I found that if I'm going to the bottom and going my way up, you know, there might be double work because somebody might have already handled it and then I'm doing the same thing. Um, Friday forecast. So my office manager always takes a look at my entire calendar for the following week on Friday and gives me a Friday forecast. So says like, Hey, Susan, you got, you know, six prospects meetings, you have, you know, three one-on-ones, you have, you know, expert witness work, you have blah, blah, blah. And then it gives me the chance to be like, Hey, you know what, let's go ahead and schedule a couple more one-on-ones or let's, you know, let's shift this to the following week because like, I don't, I don't have the bandwidth to do it right now type of thing. So that's, that's really good. Um, three strikes and you're out. So that comes to like networking um, <laughs> and, and also on clients. So to me, it's just like, everybody's entitled to have a bad day, right? We'll give everybody the benefit of the doubt once. Second time somebody has a bad day, takes it out on my staff, my staff has to tell me about it. Um, and then I address it with the client. Because you know what, if people are spending most of their working hours in the growth of my company, it needs to be a happy work environment. Um, and then the third time it happens, if you make one of my staff members cry or things like that, we're done with you as a client. And you know, what that's done is that's empowered my employees. It's also made them feel like, hey, you know what, you got my back no matter what. Um, but the same thing with networking. If you like, if you have to reschedule on me three times, I'm never going to meet with you again. I mean, and it's no offense to you, but there's something chaotic in your life making you have to reschedule three times. And I don't want that chaos next to me. So it's just, if you know, show me, I will never meet you again. You know, unless you got hit by a car, you know, I'm not an ass, but, um, but it's just like, but if you, if like you, um, you know, reschedule on me and then you reschedule, like, I get it, like things happen, but you know, I mean, it's, you know, I had a guy that jumped a turnstile cause he knew my policy and he had like screwed up twice and he knew the third time he, I was, I was never going to see him again. He's like, I jumped the turnstile. I knew I had to get here. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and then the zero email rule. And we file all our emails. So by Friday, all the emails are filed. And I'll tell you, that just goes into the weekend with just a much more settled, you know, um, state of mind for everybody in the office. And it's something that everybody's required to do because, you know, inevitably there's going to be staff changes. So as long as all those emails are filed, if anybody steps in and they take over the, the inbox for that person, then at least they can go back and take a look and see, you know, what all was going on. Personal growth. So this would be like if you're on a board or, or different things of that nature, um, have a sleep on it folder. Um, if you have a reaction, a, a gut reaction when you read an email, that needs to go in the sleep, sleep on it folder. And you also need to have a tone checker. Um, I can't tell you if, like everybody has that saying in their head that happens when, when you read something and you're like, you know, what the blank or, you know, you're just like, ah. Um, so if that happens, you are going to respond to that person emotionally, no matter what. You're going to try to school them. You're going to be nasty. You know, so you need to have somebody that's your tone checker that takes out the emotion. And then after you've put it in the sleep on it folder for a day. Um, professional development. 
Um, I think that's something that's just hugely important. If you don't invest in yourself, nobody else will. Um, and you guys are investing in yourselves because you're at this, you know, at this session today. So that I, you know, I bravo to you guys for that. And then the important thing is understand what you want to control. I had somebody that was when I before I became national president, the person that was in that seat, she said that would be the most important thing for me is to understand what I wanted to control. So, and then the last team is the home team. Um, I share my calendar with my husband because. He knows better if he looks at my calendar and sees that I have 14 meetings in one day. If he schedules dinner out with one of his friends, I'm going to kill him. So, you know, I think that's important to, um, to just share your calendar and things like that. Also manage expectations. I think in this, in this career, in this path, I mean, we have to work hard, right? We spend a lot of hours. We have to eat what we kill. And I think managing the expectations of your home life is hugely important. Um, also, you know, things that I always look at is pre-cooking meals. I do that a lot on Sunday and also get a housekeeper. I, I mean, I know that there's some women on the, on the call and things like that. And I think sometimes as, as females, we look at that as a failure, but that goes back to your hourly time. So look at what you're worth per hour and then say, you know what, if I have somebody come in, what could I be making in the world if I outsource that thing? And then it's okay to take time for you. I mean, I think you have to program that me time in. Um, you know, I know it's COVID. We got a lot of me time right now, right? But it's like, you know, um, go to a meeting, go to a, a movie in the middle of the day. So it's pretty cool. You know, do, you know, schedule a massage, do those things for you, I think is very, very important. And then I'm going to give you my unsolicited advice. I'm going to just um, read right through them because I know we're running out of time and I, I don't know if there's any questions. But so these are things that I've learned along the way. So, you know, my aunt taught me, she had a dress shop for 35 years. She said, never use a $10 one when you can use a nickel one. So that's just to, you know, keep you humble. Always find a common bond. You know, anytime you're meeting with a client, look around their office, see something that you can comment on. If it's a family picture, I mean, it's the family they like, so you can make a comment on it, right? Um, don't ask anyone that you weren't wouldn't be willing to do yourself. So um, that's something, you know, I learned when I was doing events at the University of Missouri and I would have a staff of like 200 people during concerts and sporting events. Develop the skill of tenacity. We call that the ability to find the answer. So knowing that like Google isn't the end all be all, but know who to connect with to be able to bring that stuff in. Um, my dad taught me this one. Um, be careful of the toes you step on today because they may connect, be connected to the ass you have to kiss tomorrow. So that's, uh, you know, just keeping yourself like knowing like if, if you end up leaving a company or you end up a meeting doesn't go well or you lose a client, you know, do it in a civil way because you never know where it can lead to. And we always say in our office, if we wouldn't friend you on Facebook, we don't want you as a client. Doesn't mean we friend our clients on Facebook, but it's just that type of mindset that we want to like who we work with at this point. And then my mother always told me, don't let your alligator mouth overload your tadpole behind. <laughs> it's just like, don't get too big for your britches type of thing. And then again, I had mentioned before, if you don't value your time, no one else will. That also came from my mother. And then get a mentor and get involved. So, and look at being a mentor. It's just like when you're teaching a class, you know, you can kind of, uh, you prepare yourself even more. So I'm going to, oh wait, you gotta, you want my contact information. There we go, sorry. So that's my contact information right there. Do we have any questions? I know it's like, 228. <laughs> Usually that's an hour talk, people. I condensed. <laughs> You're muted. No, I don't see any questions. If anyone has any, we have two minutes left. You can toss them <laughs> in the chat or in the Q&A section. Yeah, and I will say that if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, I'm happy to connect with you. But if you don't say who you are, like, I'll delete you. So, um, you know, make sure that you just say, hey, I saw you, you know, talk at the Annuities Genius and I'd like to connect and then I'll totally accept you. All right. Van wants to know, what do you mean by filing emails? Filing emails. So every single, so, okay, so I have a prospect file. So it's just like, so before a client, you know, before a prospect becomes a client, all the prospect emails go into that one file. And then once that, that prospect becomes a client, then I have a client folder that has all the subfolders of all my clients. So then I go to the first one, go to the last one, hit shift, click all of them, and then drop them into that email box. So, and I mean, if you saw, I don't even know how many email um, folders I have, but because I have them for advisory boards, I have them for speaking engagements, I have them for PR things, I have them for networking things. So it's just, you know, you can have as many files as you want, but it just makes you so, so efficient because then you can go back and, you know, anytime like, Susan, you know, I need to know what this is. I know exactly where it is. All right. I'm not sure how deep we can go into this, but Justin Colvin is asking, 
Where do you derive the majority of your income? Is it from insurance or speaking or consulting? Um, no, I can go into that. Uh, 60% is insurance sales, um, I would say. And then um, about 25%, uh, 25-30% is, um, is expert witness work. And then the rest is like speaking fees. So you know, speaking fees is only like, you know, five, 10%. Awesome. Only All because right, I last... just didn't redid my, uh, my E&O renewal app yesterday. <laughs> <I know that's laughs> so it's a good tough. day to ask you that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is going to be the last one. Taylor Scott, what would your advice as someone, what would be your advice as someone starting out an advisory business? They're brand new. Oh gosh. Um, I'm trying to stop sharing my screen. Um, <laughs> how do I do that? Sorry. Stop sharing. There we go. Um, advice for starting a consulting business. Uh, okay. So I guess my follow-up question is, are you, are you in the business now or are you just new to the business? If you're, if you're new to the business, I don't think I would focus on consulting yet. Um, if you've been in the business, say 10 years, 15 years, I mean, to be a consultant, you really have to like, no. Um, so it's just like, so it's all about pitching it. And it's all about, you know, like when you're meeting with clients and having, you know, possibly doing a sale with them, giving them the option saying, you know, we can do this one of two ways, you know, we can do it on a consulting basis or especially like if somebody says their brother-in-law is their broker. Yeah. That's a consulting job. I know right off the top. Cause like, why the hell are they asking me to help? You know? So it's just, <laughs> so kind of like knowing kind of your market and then you have to tell people, tell CPAs, tell attorneys. I mean, those are the great, the greatest two referral sources that they understand the whole hourly fee type of thing. And so if you're saying like, look, do you have any clients that are wanting to have an insurance analysis or go through and see, you know, if they're, you know, risk assessment type of things. Um, and then, you know, put together marketing material behind it. I know that was really quick. Is that okay? Are we still here? Hello. Can you guys still see me? Can you put something in the chat box? Yes. Okay. So I think, yeah, <laughs> I think he's frozen. Um, okay. So does anybody have any other questions? Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I love tech. I was worried that I was going to have the problems. Um, but I know that he had said earlier that they, um, that his office is on technology drive and they didn't have internet for um, two hours. So I'm wondering if that, that kind of happened. Um, okay. So what do you, okay. So what do I mean by tone checker under personal growth? So tone checker is a person. So somebody in your office that can read through an email and see like, okay, you know what you might, you know, Van, you might've put some emotion in there or, you know, let's take this part out. And then, so just having a person that can kind of go over that with you. Are you mostly whole life since you're in New York? No. And I actually mostly do health insurance and property and casualty. So I do, you know, I do some, some life insurance and things like that, but mostly we're employee benefits and property and casualty. Any other questions? I appreciate you guys, you guys hanging out with me <laughs> even since the host didn't come on or stay on. Any other questions for you guys? If not, I think we can wrap it up. Um, I thank you guys for being um, with us today. I'm not sure when your next meeting is because I don't have that information, um, but uh, like I said, I'm, I'm in New York City, I'm, I'm, but I'm from a town of a thousand people in Missouri. Okay, what's your biggest business mistake? Um, okay, so my biggest mistake or the thing that I didn't anticipate when I started my own company is I underestimated the loneliness factor. So, um, you know, I come from a really big bustling office with a lot of people. And then when I started at my own company, I was out of my apartment. And so I didn't understand like, oh, that 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 was just going to be bad. And, you know, I think in terms of like a mistake um, would be probably about six years ago, we got rid of the cringe worthy clients. So the ones that you see calling on caller ID and you're like, Ugh, like you don't want to talk to them. You know what, if you don't want to talk to them, you're not doing them. You're not doing right by them. And you know what they're, they're just, again, goes back to that. You wouldn't friend them on Facebook. Right. So I think that if I could have done that sooner rather than later, 
things could have even just taken off even more. I mean, not that we're not in a great spot right now, but it's just one of the things that I wish I had learned sooner. Um, how do you use annuity genius in your business? You know what? I, I am a speaker for you guys. So I, um, I just uh, found out about annuity genius when you guys asked me to speak. So I can't even answer that question for you. I'm so sorry. Any other questions? Is anybody in New York here? Anybody in Missouri here? Anybody a Chiefs fan here? <laughs> Wisconsin, hey, Tennessee. Well, I two of my best friends live in Wisconsin, Taylor. So I have um, one that lives in, uh, in Spencer, so really, really small, and then um, the other one that is in Appleton. And then Florida is our sixth borough, so you might as well be New York, so yeah. So go volunteers for the Tennessee and go Badgers, right? Uh, do you communicate with women differently than men since your uh, gender communication differences? You know, I'll tell you, I don't think I do. Um, I'm a very direct person. I mean, I grew up, my father was a two-star general in the military. And so I grew up with a, around a tremendous amount of men and I just was raised as a very direct person. And I feel like life's too short to say what, what you think, what you don't think. And so um, I will tell you, I don't think it's a men and women thing, but I do know about myself. Like I'm a very much to the point thing. And I know that about myself. So when I write an email, like you could send me an email and, and ask me how my weekend was. I don't care that you asked me how my weekend was. And to be honest, I really don't care how your weekend was. I just want to like, like, let's get this done because I'm incredibly busy, but I've had to, I purposely have to go back in and soften my email. So I have to go back in and say, Hey Van, how was your weekend? How are the kids doing? And then ask you what I want and then close it out. So I think it's more like also knowing the audience because that's just also personality styles. And one of the things I learned a long time ago is, you know, everybody has words that mean different things. So, you know, Taylor, I could ask you, how are you doing today? And you could say, oh, I'm fine. And I, and fine to me could be 10 out of 10. I could be thinking Taylor's having the best day ever, but for Taylor, that could be three out of 10 when, when they say fine. So you could be having a bad day and I don't even know it. So I think that's something that's, that's important is to kind of understand, you know, your audience and know how they communicate and be, be sensitive to that because I know I can steamroll and I know I can steamroll. So I hope that answers your question a little bit. Anything else before we jump? Any books that you would recommend to us? Um, you know, I am, I'm not a big book. I'm a, so, okay. So I will tell you, I'm not a big sales book person. I'm just not. Um, uh, because I feel like I live and breathe my business so much that when I read, I'm like a, you know, Harlan Coben, Philip Margolin. I'm like, I just want just kind of some, you know, murder mystery. That's something so far removed from my, from my career. Um, so I, you know, I mean, I, you guys have read all the ones that everybody else has read, right? Like who moved my cheese and, you know, uh, you know, like Dale Carnegie books and things like that. Um, I will say that, uh, you know, anytime you can take a class to learn kind of like about a different area. I mean, I think the important thing is, is just like understanding what you're good at and knowing what you're not good at and being okay with that and bringing in the people that are good at the stuff that you're not good at. Like I'm not a good finance person and, but I have a great CFO. Um, so it's just, that I think those things are kind of really important. Any coaching or marketing programs that you might recommend? So I will tell you one of the coolest things that I ever did is I started my own networking group that actually has become almost like a board of directors and it's no overlapping industry. And so it's become almost like this coaching program for each other. So um, we call it BYOC, bring your own coffee. And we get together once a month, we have two speakers, but then it just, I'll tell you, it becomes such a great sounding board for things. So if somebody has like, um, you know, like a staffing issue or, or even like a personal issue, like, Hey, you know, I have an employee that, her mother was diagnosed with cancer and she's wanting to take a lot of time off and I don't know how it's going to work and things like that. I think having those people, cause I will tell you having those peer to peer mentors, I think is more important than any money you can spend on, you know, any um, like betterment thing. I mean, so I had somebody that told me um, a while ago, I w was um, at the university of Missouri and I was speaking and this other woman that was speaking she said that she looks to have nine deep relationships at any given time. She looks to have three people that she's mentoring, 
three people that are mentoring her and then three peer to peer mentors. So those peer to peer mentors, I think are so, so important. Like when I, six months before I became the now president of WIFS, I lined those up for myself. And so when I lined those people up for myself, it was, we had once a month calls because, and one person was also, um, you, do you, are any of you guys members of NAFA? Some of you guys probably are. Um, so Julie McNeely, um, so she was the first female national president of NAFA. She's, she's actually my, um, one of my best friends that lives in Spencer, Wisconsin. Um, she and I were national presidents at the same time. So she was a peer to peer mentor for mine. Um, some of you guys might be a member of Gamma um, and uh, Daryl Lee Barbera. She was a peer to peer mentor of mine. And then I had another person that was, had been on uh, a national board of directors. And so they were just great to just connect with, bounce ideas off and know that, okay, we can, you know, it's a safe space where we don't have to worry about anything we're talking about getting back to anybody else, but you can just really kind of let your hair down. So I think those people are, are great to have connections with. And, you know, and you have them all across the country. I mean, anybody that's on this call, those are great examples of possible peer-to-peer -peer mentors for you where, you know, you can just pick up the phone and say like, Hey, Billy, can I pick your brain about this? I have a client. This is a situation and this is what I'm doing. Um, I also just joined a new uh, mastermind group called uh, Blueprint and that's all brokerage owners. And so that's been cool. And there's people all across the country. I think I'm the only person in New York and you know, the ideas that I'm getting, like I was, I had a salesperson that wasn't selling and I was like, what the hell do I do with them? Uh, you know, any suggestions and things like that. And those guys were great on giving me feedback. And then I ended up terminating him and I hired somebody and it was like great for that type of stuff. So I think anytime you can build those type of, you know, masterminds and groups or coaching programs, I think are excellent. Business virtually, uh, what are you, uh, you know what, I'm in New York City. It's how it is right now. I mean, and so one of the things, have you guys heard of bomb bomb? So it's B-O-M-B, -B, B O M B, like you're throwing a bomb. Um, and I learned that from one of my blueprint guys. And so it's a way to like virtually present you know, say a proposal. So like if, cause the thing is, you know, it's like you send out a proposal and things like that. Sometimes people go through it. Some people don't, you know, sometimes people want to have a, a meeting for it, but I mean, in New York, nobody's going to meet with you right now. So that's been something that we're getting set up because we know open enrollments around the corner and it's going to be a way to like explain the benefits line by line, have, you know, my vice president, Colleen, her little pi picture down at the bottom, explaining the benefits, the client will then have it can uh, disperse it around. So it's kind of a cool thing. Okay. So Billy said, there's also a similar program called loom. Yeah. I mean, things like that. I think it's just like, you have to have those in place because everybody's on a different page when it comes to COVID. Like, you know, my husband and I both had COVID in the middle of April. So, um, you know, in New York, we have to wear a mask about everything, but I'm like less afraid because I've already been there, done that. So, um, and so I'm happy to meet with people, but most people just don't want to meet with you right now. So I think that you're going to have to do that because you're just going to have to be sensitive about it because everybody's going to be different. Some people may live with, you know, their grandparents or things like that, or some people might be, you know, at risk. Okay. I know Taylor, you got to go. I think we all got to go, right? We've <laughs> gone 15 minutes over. Any other questions before you shut out? And I know I went really fast. I found out this morning it was 30 minutes instead of an hour. So I was like, what? I was like, this is an hour talk. I'll talk really quick. So any other questions? I think we're good. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for having me again and really appreciate meeting you guys again. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and just preface that, um, that you saw me here on Annuity Genius. And, um, and I appreciate your time. Take care, guys.